Hello, City Skylines fans. I'm Soxway Up, and today we're going to be reviewing Compatibility Report, a mod that is out that is really doesn't change the functionality of the game, but it helps you figure out if the mods you've installed in your game are causing you issues, if they're compatible with each other. So what does this mod do? It checks all the mods you subscribe to for compatibility issues or missing dependencies and creates a really awesome report, very detailed report for you to go through and figure out what's going on with your game. The screenshot's taken from the description on Steam. You can go over there and read this thoroughly, but again, you can see the location of the report, where to find it on your computer, which is very handy. Once you find that, you can go through it. We're gonna do that here. I need to get Lake Soxide working again since the airport's DLC came out, so it's time to do that. We're gonna try to get it. Here, I loaded the game for the first time. And we see we have some compatibility issues. There are some issues with prop anarchy and tree anarchy, which have replaced prop and tree anarchy. That's a tongue twister. But so we're gonna remove that. We're also gonna take a look at the report now. Let's see here. We got a compatibility report on the 18th of February. Shows you the version it's on, how many mods our game has. It also shows you how many, how many mods are in the catalog. They have 1,592 mods that they reviewed. Insane. I'm not going to read all of this, but this general information is definitely some really good tips on what to do and not to do with City Skylines. The one thing I do want to pop out, pop out, point out is that you should definitely back up your existing game with a different save file or ideally you probably want to start a new city after doing this, but we'll, we'll talk through a little bit of it and see where we, where we land. But as you see here, 29 mods that I could or should unsubscribe to. As we go through the list, it starts kind of making sense that the painter mod really is the big issue right now. It shows up in a lot of these different mods lists of incompatibility. So they're incompatible with painter. Painter keeps popping up. There is a replacement for painter. As we go down here and we start seeing, you know, just a lot of it. Remove decorative sprites is also there, but let's go find the actual painter section. You can see here there's a ton of mods that painter is incompatible with. So we're going to want to head go ahead and remove that one and then see if that helps and, and maybe come back to the report. I'm going to do this in phases, remove a couple mods, make sure it's working or make sure this report is looking better. And then we'll load up the game and see where we're at. So now we're going to head over to load order tool. This is how I launch these skylines and manage which mods I have enabled in my game. And then I export them and save them for different saves. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it the other way as well, but we're going to go ahead and exclude painter completely. We might find that we need to actually remove it completely from steam. We can do that later, but here we're also going to find prop and tree anarchy. We're going to go ahead and exclude that as well. We don't want it enabled. We don't even want it loaded in. I have a feeling we're going to have to actually uninstall these though. So let's launch the game. See what happens again. Okay. Same exact screen. So we're going to go ahead and go into steam. We're going to get rid of prop and tree anarchy and painter and maybe a couple more mods. And then we'll restart it up and see if we can at least get this initial screen to go away. Let's see what happens. All right. Loading up the game again after we've removed, removed some mods from the actual steam workshop. And you can see that pop up warning is gone. We're going to now jump back over into the report and see what else we can find. There might be some more clues of certain mods that we should remove. And one of the first ones that jumps out to me is removing decorative sprites. This is a duplicate kind of like a, a yeah duplicate mod that's been replaced with the fun similar functionality as Bob the tree and prop replacer. Network skins is a minor issue. I don't think we're going to be able to remove that because we might have a dependency of that in the game. Um, but you can see here we have find it to and find it to beta installed right now on our computer and we're subscribed to both of them. That was a silly mistake that I made. So we probably want to pick one or the other one and keep it. We'll see what this tells us. I have a feeling we're probably going to want to stick with the regular version of it, but we can't have both. It's a mistake to have both. It's going to cause issues. And this report's telling us that. So. You know, over the years or months, you might go into the Steam Workshop, install some mods, you come back to your game, you play it, everything's good, and then all of a sudden things just start to be sluggish. And this might be able to tell us the reasons or may improve our startup or load times and things like that. And that's what we're trying to do here. I'm just trying to get Lake Soxide to work again. So let's go ahead and kind of go through this. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this document. I'll let you do that yourself. But you can see here, there's also mods that you could unsubscribe to we're going to clean that up and then we're going to maybe maybe we'll start the game soon 
So we're loading it again to get a fresh report. Pop-up is still gone. I've removed a few of those mods, those duplicate mods that we've had. So let's jump back over to the report and see where we're at. So now we have five mods with major issues. It's not telling us that we need to unsubscribe to any anymore. Now it's just saying, hey, there's some mods that have major issues. You might want to read this and make a decision on your own. You can see we have a couple mods here that have prerequisites. So they're compatible with the game version, but the mod requires a different version to actually work. And so that's again, I, I found a mod on the workshop and I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. But I didn't actually read the description and install the prerequisites. And there's another one right there with the extra vehicle effects. And then also we did the same thing with, or this one we are installed, or we are subscribed to the beta of Node Controller where the report's telling us maybe we want to downgrade to the regular version um, to help with some of the Surface Painter compatibility issues. At this point, I probably could have done a little more cleanup and adjustments of the mods, but I was itching. I was itching to see if the game was going to load for me. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. You can see I do have a lot of missing assets, even though I made a video about how to fix that. It happens, but we're going to jump ahead and see what happens when the game actually loads, see if we get any errors and we do. So this was because we got rid of the extra vehicle effects. So we have this error here that pops up. I'm hoping we can hit OK, replace the save file. It looks like there was a extra vehicle effects .dll file that was trying to be read in with the save file. And since that mod is gone, the save file just doesn't really know what to do with it. So you can see that there is a mod exception. Hopefully that's OK. This is where you got to be kind of careful. We do know that that's the mod that caused that. So if we really needed it, we could re-enable that and kind of just deal with the compatibility issues if we really wanted to keep this city. So we had a big DLC released, Airports DLC. We had a bunch of mods that needed to be upgraded for that. I wanted to use this as a way to kind of take time to make sure my game was, you know, had mods that were all compatible with each other. And it's definitely helped. There's some more things that I need to do to kind of read through all of those mods to see what we can do to improve our load time and performance. There could be things killing the FPS. I found that if you look at some of the reports with the FPS booster specifically, it could hurt your GPU because it could ping the GPU and cause it to run at 100% no matter what if you don't have it set correctly. And that could be damaging to the hardware that you're playing the game on. I definitely feel like this is a mod that everyone should check out that are, I mean, if you use mods in City Skylines, I definitely think you should spend some time with compatibility report. It appears a lot of time and effort went into making this mod and you can see a list of all the contributors or people that they're thanking for, for helping out with creating the mod or making their source code available for people to review it, to figure out compatibility issues without just trial and error. The City Skylines community is amazing. It's awesome that we have tools like this and this can help us. You know, Lake Sockside, I started over a year ago. The mods in the game have changed dramatically in that time frame, And it's time for me to kind of switch up which mods I'm using because some things have been replaced. There's a single mod like Prop Anarchy that has actually replaced like five or six different mods that I used to use. And that's, you know, that'll help with load time eventually. And, you know, you have less things being loaded in less mods that you actually have enabled instead of 110. I'm going to try to limit that down so that the performance of the game is better. It's an old game on an old game engine, and we have to really keep these things in mind when we're installing mods and blaming the game for sucking when it's really us that are making that mistake of adding in a mod that conflicts with another mod and they're just not compatible with each other. So they just lead to issues. Again, like I said, I'd highly recommend checking out this mod. I hope this review or kind of guide was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or definitely go to Steam and use the forums on there. They highly recommend it for everyone to do that, to get the most out of this mod. And they're, they're very responsive. You can go on there right now. And you can see there's multiple comments today of back and forth questions. And again, the community is amazing. I'm glad we have it. In my personal opinion, that's why City Skylines is still, it's still in a live game because of the modding community and I couldn't be more thankful. So that's all for today. Look forward to some more videos coming out from me. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button and I'll catch you on the next video.